Hey YouTube, welcome to part 5 of the Logs Better Build. In this episode, I am going to get the wheels on the trailer and I'm going to build the housing for the coupler that joins the motor to the hydraulic pump. So let's get on with the job. Now we've got the sides of the hinge all set up. They're ready to be tacked on. Now I didn't do any more than showing in the plans. I lined this back corner up against the back of the RHS and I made sure that the bottom was plush with the bottom of the RHS. These are cut at the right angles, they work. I put the pin through to make sure that it's nice and loose and good fit in there. And I'm pretty much ready to weld that up now. So that's what I'm gonna do. Tack it on anyway, and then see how we go from there. Hmm, <laughs> finding good places to tack is gonna be difficult. Now because this is thicker material that I'm welding on, I'm going to try the 3.2mm uh, rods at about 100 amp. Right, I'm going to go all around this, top, bottom, all around the sides, everywhere I can reach, and weld that to the RHS. So I'll continue that off camera. I'm just going to weld this front support on that I call the tower. I've got him measured up in position there. Run a beta weld all the way around the bottom. Got 3.2 mil in there, so I may as well just use that, I think. Give it a go anyway. I'm gonna weld some caps over the ends of all this RHS, so I'm just gonna do that now. Okay, and this is a hinge put together. I went around, I welded everything that I could reach. Not that it needs the strength so much, but mainly wanted to make sure that I had everything welded that I could so that no moisture gets down between this plate and the RHS so that it doesn't start to rust and push it all out. So that's done. Welded all around the mounts for the oil tank and on the other side for the engine. They're welded all around as well. There's the engine sitting on the floor. The next thing to do is to make the sliding part and the actual sweater plate. Get that ground down to a sharp point and it should be ready to run. Got painted of course, finish it off, grind it, uh, get all this batter off. But yeah, getting there very quickly now. Well YouTube, it's been over two weeks since I was out here last to do this job. Life and work gets in the way of my hobbies occasionally. In the meantime, I did go and try and buy a couple of washers with a one inch hole in them to hold the wheels on with, but I couldn't buy them so I may do by drilling a one inch hole down a bit of inch and a half rod and cutting myself a couple of washers. They're not quite the same thickness, I just eyeballed it, but they'll do the trick quite nicely. Next job is to get the wheels on there I think. I'll have to take them off again to paint it, but I do need them on to finish measuring up some stuff just so I can finish the construction before I paint it. And the obvious way for them to go on is with the, oh, I can't think what you call it, where you put the air in, on the outside anyway. I'll put a bit of grease on these wheels when I put them on for real. As soon as these are going to come off, I'll just give it a little bit of a bend by hand just so it doesn't fall off. There you go, wheels on. I can put that down on the ground now and use it to get my final measurement. Even though I've measured this pretty precisely with the CAD, I want to get the exact measurement with it on the ground, with the real wheels on it, so that I can be assured that I can work this horizontally and vertically. I've got this chocked up here, so just want to make sure it's reasonably level to the floor. That's 3.30 to the bottom there, and yeah, near enough. That live ball's not too bad. It's within a millimetre or so of being level. Now, what I need to do is measure from the floor to the centre of this hole here, which is 680 millimetres, which is about uh, 2 foot 2 and 13 sixteenths. Uh, 680 millimetres, I'll just check that against the plans, see how that works. Ah, oh dear. I've really got to get a computer down here because I don't have the actual plan that I need to check that measurement. So, I'll have to go and print that out. 
and one day real soon see about getting a computer down here so I can access the plans from down here in the workroom. Well, I went up and printed the plan off that I was missing and the measurement on the plan is 655 so the wheels I got are a little bit bigger than the plan calls for. That's going to happen so it is very important that you measure this distance here and I've got 680 for working out just where you need to drill the pivot hole in the SHS to pivot this around. Right, I'm going to cut out part 022 and 023. They're the bits that allow me to attach the engine and the hydraulic pump together. And I'm just going to plasma the circles out. I'll cut the outside circle first using my poor man's radius. And then I'll cut the inside. I'm going to have to freehand the inside of the small one. But I do have a radius that will cut the inside of the larger one. I just need to put this other one back on because I did miss a bit. Might just need to hit that a little bit more from this side. Might be better off going around from this side. I've drilled some holes in them now and probably weld them on and then neaten them up in the lathe. Now this is me measuring up the length of the housing that I need for the hydraulic coupler. If you're using the exact same components that I've specified, then you can just use the dimensions and the plans. But if you've deviated at all from that, you'll need to measure it and just make sure that it's going to fit and adjust as necessary. Here I've put the coupler on the shaft from the motor and on the shaft from the hydraulic pump and I'm measuring the distance in between them so I can get the coupler the correct length. we had both ends of the pipe in the lathe so they're perfectly square and I've cleaned all the dross off the back of the ring so that it'll sit flat. The idea here is to sit them both flat on that piece of three quarter inch plate that's there. That should have them sitting on the plate perfectly square so the only worry then is that when I weld them the weld itself will pull them out of alignment and I figure I can combat that by tack welding them around in numerous places around the circumference of the pipe before I weld it completely. As you can see in this shot, I tacked it in the 12 and 6 o'clock positions and then again in the 9 and 3 o'clock before I went around and welded it completely. I didn't clamp it down, I just put some pressure on the pipe on the top of it just to hold it nice and firm. I may have done better by clamping it down but holding it by hand worked just fine. I did check the alignment of the pipe and the ring between each tack to make sure it hadn't pulled because if I got into trouble I wanted to cut the minimum possible number of tacks and as it turned out it came out pretty perfect. Very happy with it. The other end sits flush with the pipe and I've beveled the end of the pipe to help me get a good weld on it. The idea is that this end has to be exactly parallel with the ring because we don't want the pump sitting at a different angle to the engine. We need to have the shafts exactly aligned. Otherwise, it'll just promote vibration. I plan to follow the same strategy that I used for the ring when I was welding it, and that is to tack it around the edge in four places before I go around and complete the weld. Unfortunately, the camera angle wasn't real good for seeing these tacks, but a tack's a tack. And when I came to do it, I decided that two tacks would be enough, each on opposite sides. Because of the geometry of the parts that I was welding, I didn't think I'd get any pulling out of shape. When I did do the weld, that turned out to be the case, so I was pretty happy with that decision. As for the weld itself, I don't have one of those fancy turntables that they've got for welding pipe you can see on YouTube. So I just put it down on a flat surface, in this case it was that piece of 3 quarter inch flat that I have, and roll it around by hand while I weld the circumference of it. It seems to work pretty well for what I need to do, and it turned out quite good for this job. Once I'd finished the welding, I put it back in the lathe so that I can make it all nice and neat. I faced off both the ring and the end piece as well as putting a bit of a turn down the side where I just welded the end piece on. I had to work very slowly, very shallow cups because all I had to hold it in the jaws of the chuck was that ring and it wasn't a very strong grip on that. 
so very shallow cuts to the while. For that reason, I decided I wouldn't record it. Now, I also drilled the holes for the camera. There was nothing much to it. While I had the part in the lathe, I used one of the tools to put a shallow score mark around through the centre of the holes on each end, and then all I had to do was make sure that I kept the holes 90 degrees apart, and they would be a perfect fit. The holes in the big ring actually are to mount it onto the engine, and the holes in the smaller ring are to mount the hydraulic pump onto it. I forgot to mention, but while I had the lathe, I also neatened up the centre hole. If you haven't got a lathe, I'm sure you can do just as well with a grinder and a little bit of patience to make it all nice and neat and measure up your holes just with a ruler and possibly a square. I just drew a couple of chalk lines on to mark where I had to do the cut out. Now this cut out is to allow me to put the coupling inside and get an allen key in there to tighten it up. And the reason for that is that the coupling is too big to go through the hole at the front after it's mounted on the engine. So the choice is to put it all together on the shaft of the engine and then set the housing over it and have an opening underneath that I can get in for the spanner. I used a plasma cutter to cut mine out, but realistically it would have been better off to use a cutoff wheel on the grinder. To get a radius on the corners, I could have put a drill down each of the four corners that I was going to cut to, and then used the cutoff wheel to cut in between them, and that would have made a really nice neat cut. As it was, using the plasma cutter, I had the grinder on it anyway, and the bearing pill, and it still didn't work out as neat. The one saving thing about that is that it's underneath, and no one will ever see it unless they get there, down on the ground and stick their head under it and look up. Hey, thanks for taking the time to watch this video, I do hope you found it somewhat interesting. Progress should be a little bit quicker from here on in with more of fitting the parts together and less of long tedious wells. If you'd like to see more of my project, you can go to my channel or browse my website. Don't forget to click like, comment and subscribe for more. Until next time.